Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, there's not a better place in this country to be than in God's house. Well, praise God. We, we, we hear about a lot of things going coming against Christians and a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of uh, people having problems because they are Christians. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people trying to trying to cut Christians down. But we are children of the most high God. We've got to remember that. That we're children of God. And I we we have us we are uh, uh, we we have the authority to come against Satan. And if we need to, we're going to do that. Praise God. And I want to uh, just just to remind you, I don't guess we have the uh, announcements up here, but uh, y'all, y'all know that uh, I'll be ministering on Sunday. Yeah. And I, I, I appreciate if y'all come anyway. But <laughs> we, we just, uh, we're going to have a good time Sunday. I, I, I feel, been feeling as I studied, I've been feeling the presence of God and yeah. And, and I, I believe we're going to see some mighty things. So, <laughs> every service we're going, we're, we're expecting to have great things happen. Yeah, yeah. This, this Sunday, I'm, I'm just thrilled and honored to be able to stand, stand up in this pulpit and be able to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sure. And uh, we want to just uh, stand tonight. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We'll get right into our praise and worship. Remember John and his family. They, they're uh, on. on a, vacation this week and and God's uh, protection is on them. And they'll come back and just, just refreshed and ready to go again. Praise God. So let's, uh, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, that we're in your house thank tonight. You, yes. and God, we just thank you for the way thank that you've you. already blessed us this week, God. Oh, we thank you for all of the, all the things that you've already done for us, Lord, and the needs that you've met for us, Lord. And we just give you the praise for it. And we give you the praise and honor for this service tonight, Lord. And God, we just, uh, we just ask the Holy Spirit to just take over the service. And God, we just thank you for what you're doing, God. And we just give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory in this service tonight, Lord. And we, we love you, praise you, and honor you. In the precious name of Jesus, amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you. Just worship amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Get you a, a hymnal and let's turn to page 240. You got one right there close by. Page 240. Thank you, Hallelujah. How many remember when you went to school, they had a role and they called your name? Right. And uh, if you were absent, something was wrong. And But when you was there, you hollered, I'm here. I'm looking forward to that role being called one day. Praise mm-hmm. God. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound in time, there will be no more. And the morning breaks, he can ride in the When the Savior earth shall gather over all the earth. And the roll is called the thunder of the When the roll is called the yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. All that bright and cloud this morning, when the day and the cross will rise, and the glory of His resurrection share. When His chosen one shall gather over all the others, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll When the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to set the sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. And when all the life is over, our work on earth is done. And the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord 
It's made for the pure and the free. These truths in God's word He has given.
Yeah. And there's some of, some of them that are not saved, I'm sure. And a lot of them are saved. They're ready to go. And praise God for that. But if they're just one mm -hmm. that's not ready to go, I think that we ought to just concentrate on them. Because they're... they're, they're I, I don't want to see any, any of my family or your family or anybody out here on the street right. to have to go to a place they call hell. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. God has got some great things planned for his children. Yes. And it, he, did, he, didn't, uh, he didn't intend for us to have to beg and plead him for anything. He wants every person to go to heaven. He wants every person to come to him because we're his children. Yeah. And, I, and, and I, I, I just felt like that if there was uh, uh, one in this service that Sunday, and uh, some of them don't come to church all the time, but uh, if, uh, if, if there's one, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I pray for that person. Yeah. That, that, uh, that if they're not, if they don't know God, if that the Lord is their personal Savior, Man. that they'll come to the come to realization that they need that. Yeah. I, th this world is coming shortly just to an end sure because they can't uh, they can't do anything else because these things that, that are happening today that we see, the Lord said to watch those things because. They're, they're going, the things that we see happening today is what he said would happen in the end times. So we're, we're very close. I, I get up every day and wonder, is this the day or every night? Is this the night that he might come? Yeah. But he, he's going he's to come, mm -hmm. and it's going to be shortly. So I want to just pray for those that are not saved tonight, especially. Yeah. And so let's, uh, if there's not any more requests, does anybody else have a request? Or, and I want, I want you to just stand. There. And if there's anybody that's hurting or sick tonight, please let's lay hands on them. And just land tonight. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Praise you. Praise God. I, I've, I've listened, been listening to some different teachers. And one, one way that you can tell if they're true teachers, they back up everything they say with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. If they can do that, then I can listen to them. Yeah. And I and I, I got to thinking about the preachers and teachers that we have here, Sister Janice, that preach, teaches so often. Everything that she says, she has a verse in the Bible, a scripture that goes along with what she says. And it's, and it's, a, it's proof of what she says comes straight from God. A lot of times people do a lot of talking and give their opinions. Mm -hmm. and, and unless it's backed up by the Word of God, that opinion don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. If it's God's opinion, then it's a good opinion. Yeah. And I thank God for Sister Janice tonight. And I'm going to ask her to come on and just take over this service. And, yeah. and I know that God has something great for us yes, tonight. Sir. Every time we walk in these doors, we have something great. But I don't know how that... Uh, Sometimes I, I will have a special need, and Sister Janice teaches on that need that night, mm -hmm. or that uh, when she's here on Sunday morning. A lot of times she brings out something that I had have been having problems with all week, and I just thank God for that. I thank God that, that we have teachers that listens to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and, and not teaches something they want to teach, but they teach what the Holy Spirit has them teach. Yeah. So let's give Sister Janice a big hand as she comes tonight. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. I'd rather be here than anywhere. I don't know how anybody else feels about it, but I'd rather be here than any other place that I know. Hallelujah. God has been good to me. I was thinking about that song, He Touched Me, you know. But actually, He's been touching me my whole life. <laughs> and that's the truth. Hallelujah. He's been touching me my whole life. He, he gave me... Um, the best mother anybody could ever have and uh, she took me to church and God has been reaching out to me and, and Brother Kenneth and just reaching out to me with his love and mercy and grace my entire life hallelujah and he's not left me not one day not one day have I been left alone and uh, even days when the devil would tell you, okay, he's gone now. He ain't going to have nothing to do with you. That's not true. God is still there. He's faithful to his word. And I'm glad for that. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go. Uh, we're doing spiritual warfare. We're talking about the, uh, the battlefield of the mind. Uh, but we're going to take a little uh, note here tonight, a little turn if we can, because we're still on renewing the mind. But I want to uh, just share some things the Lord has kind of, I'm adding to it tonight. Some people, we're doing a series, Brother Jerry said I do a series of things, and then I add to it. And uh, the Lord adds to it. Hallelujah. Amen. He adds to it. So we are going to be in Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. We serve a supernatural God, and we should be expecting supernatural things to happen to us all the time. It should not be a rarity when something supernatural happens. When somebody, uh, when a bill is paid, and you don't even know how it got paid. When there's, when your body just all of a sudden you get a what you call a Holy Ghost tune-up on your body, and and you feel better than you felt in years. And there are things that when it looks like things are bleak or whatever, and we talked about. Out, um, last week that God can turn things around overnight and I've seen overnight things then out of nowhere unexpected suddenly something will happen so we're talking about spiritual warfare and we're talking about renewing the mind uh, I do want to uh, read um, concerning the word of God and spiritual warfare and we've talked about this about focus we need to focus when we talk about spiritual warfare we need to focus on our authority not what the devil is trying to do. The biggest thing, the problem that people have and mistake they make is they focus on what the devil's trying to do. And they, they look at, well, he's trying, the devil trying to do this and the devil's trying to do that and the devil's come against me. So many times people have stood up and I almost thought they were giving praise for the village of the devil because they're saying, well, the devil done this and the devil done that, praise his holy name. You know, all the different things they've been saying rather than putting your focus on, on God and on your authority. The devil might be trying 
mind to do a lot of things. But God, hallelujah, through his son and through the finished work of the cross, hallelujah, he stripped the devil, made an open show of him. How many of you know that? One person said maybe God's people need to make sure they went to that parade where, where the God just, Jesus just showed, made an open show of Satan. And we need to know that, hallelujah. The devil is not out here just, you know, people say, well, the devil, God has the devil on a, a, a lease and he's only going to do so much. And, and we have so much power uh, talking about the devil till we forget, Brother Jerry, to talk about the goodness of God, the greatness of God. Amen. So we're talking spiritual warfare. Focus on your authority and not what the devil is trying to do. And always in the area of prayer, get up every single day of your life and focus your coming from a place of victory. You're not trying to get anything. You're coming from that place of victory. You already have everything you need if you'll just focus on that and know, get to know what you have through the Word and use it. Hallelujah. We have to use our authority. We have to use the Word of God. So let's just read this together. Uh, we're doing this from the King James Version. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. Put on the whole complete armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Come on. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, which by the way we have already won through Christ. Come on, amen. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Somebody say, I've got it. Got I'm putting it. on that. We may be able, he said, if you'll do it, you can withstand in the evil day. You have the word. And after you took the word and you've applied it to whatever and done all, then go ahead and stand. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about what? Truth. Take truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, knowing who you are in Christ through the Word. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of what? Peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Above all, you're going to take what? Faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. There's not one thing, Brother Donald, he's going to throw against me that we cannot distinguish and put out. And the way we do that is by what? Taking back the fuel. Don't put your thoughts on what the devil wants you to think of. He's always wanting you to think about something other than what the Word says. So with, take back that. Hallelujah. Take back that fuel and put your attention on what God has to say. And you'll quench it all. The hell Helmet, take salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication with humility for all saints. Amen. Go to 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. And then we're going to do some, some teaching tonight on some subjects. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. Amen, amen. For the weapons of our warfare, no, well, twice we're seeing scripture about warfare, they're not carnal. You're not fighting a carnal battle. You're not going to use carnal weapons. But mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Well, I thought that it was really interesting that we are to put on and take up the whole armor of God. We've got weapons of our warfare. Then he talks about the air of the mind. Here it goes again. This is where this is the, where the battle is going to be engaged at. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity. This is what most Christians fail to do. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Because if we did that, we wouldn't be being. In, we would get in the hole that we get into. We get in the hole of depression. We get in the hole of worry and fear and everything else. Because when the devil shoots. We're not taking the a word of God and applying it to that situation. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Hallelujah. So we're going to use what? Salvation scriptures. 
We're going to use the gospel of peace. God is a God of peace. Jesus is a Prince of peace. We're going to use faith scriptures that we've already been given, the faith of God and the faith of Christ. I'm not waiting, Brother Jerry, for faith to come to me. I have the faith of God. If you didn't have the faith of God and if you didn't have the faith of Christ, you couldn't have got saved. You're having to believe in supernatural things. You have to believe in that Jesus uh, was born of a virgin. That within itself takes a supernatural faith. You're not going to be able to believe that without the faith of Christ. So we have been given the faith of God. So what is he saying that we need to take faith? We've been given the faith of God. And I need to stand up and say, I have the faith of God. I need uh, scriptures on righteousness, who I am, the place that God's given me. He's put me in a place, a position, that I don't just get Sister Janice one day and lose the next. I'm not a Christian one day and a sinner the next, and a Christian and a sinner, back and forth. I'm not in and out of the body of Christ. I'm not baptized in the body of Christ and sealed and then snatched and put somewhere else by my actions. And when I when I know that, I think 50% of what the devil tries to do to me will be shot. Taking the word of God and new covenant prayers, I'm not praying to try to get God to move or to do. I'm praying on the fact that He's already done and that I need to receive. Hallelujah. I need to operate in, as Brother Kenneth has told us, the Lord spoke to him, in done. I need to operate in that. Hallelujah. Everything, it is written, it is finished. I need to operate. I need to take my life that way. I want to talk some uh, a little bit about worry. I want to give you... Uh, Five, uh, the top five reasons that Christians, I'm talking about the world, I'm talking about Christians, that Christians get sick because sometimes uh, I want to make mention of this, I want to just talk on one of those things tonight, but uh, why they get sick, people say, well, you know, if God, He's provided healing, which He has, and if I'm already well, according to the Scripture, why am I sick? Well, a lot of it can be because of ignorance of, of the Word, you don't really know, but I'm going to read the top five things, and then I'm going to kind of focus on one of them just tonight, a little bit. First reason, top reason that Christians get sick is not recognizing that healing is in the atonement. They're not recognizing. They don't know. They haven't come to the knowledge that healing was covered when Jesus came and the stripes that Jesus took on his back was not for uh, uh, salvation. That was the, self, the stripe for not for salvation. The stripes was for our physical healing, not spiritual healing. But physical healing. The second one is not taking time to rest. Sometimes we don't take the proper time we need to rest. We, we go, you know, like the Energizer Bunny, not realizing that, that God is needing you to rest as much as He's wanting you to work. You have to learn to rest not your body, but rest your mind. You need to learn to rest. Sometimes people lay down, they say, well, I just couldn't rest. Right. Well, their mind was the problem. It wasn't their body, it was their mind. And we need to get their mind rested so the body will rest. So taking time to rest. The third one is not dealing with bitterness and unforgiveness. Come on, right. uh, not dealing with it. Uh, if you're bitter against somebody or unforgiveness, things like this can poison you. Uh, it poisons your mind, number one. But another thing it does is it can bring on physical sickness. It can bring on physical sickness. Another thing is not putting an end to worry. I'm talking about a complete end to worry according to what the Word says. The only reason we worry is because the devil shoots us with darts in our mind about the what ifs of life. And we're not dealing with that. And because we don't deal with that and we don't put an end to that, then we get into worry and that can make us physically sick. Another one is, and people don't like to talk about this one, but it's in renewing the mind. Paul is saying, I beg of you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which what? Is your reasonable service or worship. So number five is not taking care of your temple. If you don't take care of, of the temple, you can get sick. I don't care how much faith you have. You've got the faith of God. You got saved. But if you don't take care of your temple, if we don't do something about that, God's not going to do it. He's not going to come and make sure that, that, you know, you eat right and come in your house and make sure you rest and make sure you do all these things. But it could be these things of why uh, sickness comes on the children of God. Not knowing, being ignorant, like we said, not resting, bitterness, unforgiveness, not putting an end to worry, not taking care of your temple. 
Um, I didn't realize that that when he said that he took our griefs, I thought that meant just sorrow. But he took my sorrows, and that could be physical or mental. But griefs meant physical uh, problems and pain. That Jesus took my griefs. Yeah. And we need to know that. We need to know what the Word says about this. So let's go to Matthew 6, 25 uh, through 33. And uh, I spoke to my daughter the other day. Um, excuse me, my oldest daughter, and um, she was at her church, she was at the uh, pastor's house, they was having a Bible study, and um, he was talking about um, about worry, and uh, he said, um, does anybody in here know <laughs> where the scripture says that we need to seek God first about everything and don't take no thought about tomorrow? And my daughter said, I do. I know exactly where that is. And she said, she said, my mother taught on that for a long, long time. So she was sitting and listening. And it stuck with her. Amen. And she said, okay, this is this is the word of God. And, and it's meant something to her. We, you don't ever know when people or how many people are listening or, or taking part in something if they're really taking it in. But I, I'm finding more and more that the word of God is eternal. Hallelujah. And it's it's in it's indestructible. You can't you can't destroy the word of God. Once you plant that seed, it cannot be destroyed. Okay. So we need to make sure we're seed planters when it comes to the word. It's just like you think somebody's not listening, like Brother Donald said, there may be one word that's said to one person over the whole service that God will use for that person right. for weeks and weeks yeah. and then that person comes to an altar of repentance because of that. When we was in a prison ministry, uh, they were people that we found out later on Brother Donald got saved after they got back to their barracks. They took the message. They didn't come up front yeah. when the message was being preached that night, but they wrote letters that when I went back to my barracks, I knelt down by my bunk and I give my heart to the Lord. You don't know the seeds that you're planting. Amen. One word. Amen. We get in the word. God gives us the word. We share it with somebody else. And it can bring a harvest in their life. Amen. Uh, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Now, first of all, when we say this, how many people do you know that follows this? Let's just look at it. <laughs> Brother Billy said zero. I don't know anybody who doesn't take any thought from my life. No negative thought about anything. Said on what you shall eat. What are we going to drink? Nor yet for your body. What shall you put on? This is something that, that literally uh, it takes up most of people's thoughts every day. It takes up their life. Right. Mm -hmm. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Who can say? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Behold the fowls of the air, but they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Is that a question? Are you? Amen. On your worst day, aren't you worth more than a bird? That's what he's saying. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your statue? Anybody here? No, you cannot. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory, which was the richest man that ever lived, was not arrayed like one of these lilies. Amen. Think about that. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Mm -hmm. Therefore, after all this has been said, take no thought, saying, he's again he's saying this, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the what? The Gentiles say. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need. I think that's so important. I want to stay right there just a minute. Your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. Prayer is not to inform God of what your needs are. Come on, that's right. It's to get God involved. It's to get the Holy Spirit involved. Uh, it's not to, uh, you know, inform, misinform God. He knows what you have need of all these things. He created you. Who knows you better than God? He created man. He knows what your needs are. He knows what your emotional needs are. We're not robots. God didn't create robots. And He knows what we have need of. Look at what He said, verse 33. 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God. We're talking about in the scripture. Find out what the knowledge of the word is. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Look at the promise there. If you put God first, all these things shall be added unto you. How many of you believe that? Glory to God. You believe what we just read? All these things. If you look at, at Psalms 23, I want to go uh, there quickly. Psalms 23 verses 1 through 7. When we get, when we pray, we're not just, hear God, I want to tell you, I've got this problem, this problem, this need, that need, and I'll talk to you later on, and I hope you go and work on it. Prayer is communication. Prayer is not to inform, but to get God involved. Look at what the scrum will say this again. The Lord, now David's saying this about himself, whether we say it about ourselves or not, it's going to be up to us. The Lord is my shepherd. Do you say that? I shall not want or lack for anything. Why? Because God is a good shepherd. He is the great shepherd of the sheep. Do y'all know him as that? Amen. He maketh me. He fixes a place for me to lie down in green pastures. He makes a place. He leads me beside what? The still water. Very important because sheep are afraid of, of rushing water. He restores my soul. My mind, my will, my emotion. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Not bad, but righteousness. Good paths for his name's sake. Right. Amen. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, shadow never hurt anybody. Somebody say, praise God. Praise God. I will fear what? No evil. no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thou preparest a table for me. Talking about a land. The shepherd goes out and prepares the land. Gets all the varmints off of it. Fixes the land up. When he takes the sheep there, it's ready for him. In the presence, he said, of all my enemies, of all things, shepherd goes and runs those enemies out of the way. Thy anointest my head. Sheep are known for having these flies that go up the nostril and lay their eggs in the brain and the sheep will go crazy. But the shepherd has this little pouch on the side that has this oil and he anoints their head. Have you of you know this. Hallelujah. He anoints my head with oil. Amen. The power of the Spirit of God. And my cup, I don't know about anybody else's, but my cup is running over because I know the shepherd. Hallelujah. I just don't know about him. I know him. And absolutely, surely, positively, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Right here today, they're right behind me. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How many of you know that goodness and mercy is right there behind you? Glory to God. You can, you can reach out and touch goodness and mercy. Hallelujah. They're close enough to touch. Amen. When we pray, we need to make sure that we pray biblical prayers. God is your shepherd. He's not He's not a heroine. He's not somebody that's going to come. Uh, he's not being paid for it. And if we withdraw the pay, he's going to leave. He's not that way. And he's the great shepherd of the sheep. So when we pray, Sister Linda, we need to understand he's the great shepherd of the sheep. He's our caretaker. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to talk God into taking care of me. The whole reason Jesus came is because he loved me. Amen. And everything else that God has done. So when we pray, we need to get up close. We don't say, hey, God, I know I'm not worthy to come in your presence, but I sure could use some help over here. No, I, I've taken righteousness with me when I pray. Amen. And I'm coming up close to him. Why am I doing that? Why am I coming up close to God? Because when I pray, there needs to be an exchange that takes place. Whatever irritations, whatever worries, whatever cares the devil's trying to stick on me, I need to get up close to him, and I need to roll it over on him, and then that exchange takes place. I give him the cares. Brother LJ, he gives me peace. Hallelujah. So I take the cares and push it up over him, and then I take his peace. Hallelujah. And then he promises to keep my mind and my heart through that supernatural peace. Somebody say, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Say it again. Praise thank God. the Lord. Yes. Peace. Say thank God for one of your family members yes. that's not here tonight. Come on. Yes. Thank God. Hallelujah. Praise peace is a weapon. Yes against the worry yes. that the devil is trying to war against your mind. Wow. And what happens is, Brother Jerry, if I'm toting those cares, 
I can't walk in the peace that I need to walk in. They're, they're weighing me down. Uh, sheep was not built to, to carry a burden. They're not burden animals. They're not supposed to do that. So we have to push that care off on the Lord because the Lord cares for us. He's going to take whatever my concerns are and He is going to fix them. He's going to take care of them. I don't have to worry about it. He's going to take care of my financial need, my physical needs, all the things that I need. If I'll give them to Him right. and I'll take His peace and I'll go home and do what He tells me to do and I'll seal it with prayer and I will focus on the Lord and pray a Bible based prayer not oh Lord I hope you sure come do something for me no I know you heard my prayer I know that your word is true I know that you're, I have confidence this is the confidence I have in you that anything I ask in your name I know that I have the petition that before I know it's according to the will of God for my family to be saved and healed and delivered. I know. How many of you know what the will of the Lord is? It's wholeness, wellness, peace, right. everything. It's shalom. Hallelujah. Nothing missing, nothing broken. When I'm praying, nothing missing, nothing broken, I'm praying the perfect will of God. Yes. And the Bible says, knowing this, you're, this is confidence. You can walk in confidence. Amen. Uh -huh. The Bible says that confidence, hallelujah, this is the confidence we have in Him. I want to go to Romans 10, 17. Then we're going to go to the Amplified Version here um, of something, and I'm going to, um, I believe you can pull it up here in a minute. I want to talk about something that religion does, and um, excuse me, what religion does is tell people what they shouldn't do. Right. Um, if you've been in church any length of time, I've been in church, uh, I grew up in church, yeah. and I was told more about what I shouldn't do than what I should do. Right. Yeah. I'm not supposed to do this, I'm not supposed to do that. Um, you don't need to be doing that. You don't. Uh, you, you were told, you know, I was even told coming up, people said, Jesus don't love little girls who do that. Jesus don't love you if you tell a lie. Jesus don't love you if you do this. And so I, I kept thinking back and forth. I never was certain that God loved me until a number of years ago. And God started to reveal his love to me. And I said, if there's anything that I know a little bit about, it's about the unconditional love of God. Right. And thank God for that. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Glory to God. So faith comes, or confidence. We're going to take faith and confidence here. So faith comes by what? Yeah. Hearing what is told and what is heard comes by the what? Preaching of the message that came from the lips of Christ and the Messiah himself. Somebody say, praise God. Praise God. Faith or confidence comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the truth and the facts of God's Word. Yeah. Why do I need to hear it and hear it and hear it? So I will get to know Him. Yeah. Hallelujah. So it will be solid inside of me. Yeah. That I'm not worried one day uh, I get up and God's not going to help me and He is going to help me. I couldn't tell you how many times. Even people told me that. Well, you know, God might help you the first time. And God might help you the second time. Or maybe even the third. But after the third time, you're going to be in trouble. I've even heard people say this from the pulpit. You are on your own. My God up in heaven. God has never left me alone. Hallelujah. He is not going to leave me alone. Even when you've done something you shouldn't have done, stand in the righteousness that God has given you. Hallelujah. Stand in that position and claim that righteous, that right standing with God. Because that's the defense we have, Dominic, against the enemy as who we are in Christ. That's how we stand and say, I know that my Heavenly Father is going to help me. I know He's going to take care of me. I know he hears me when I pray. How many times the devil told you God didn't hear you when you prayed? Come on. I pray, well, my, that prayer didn't go no higher than the ceiling. It doesn't need to go any higher than the ceiling. What we need to understand is God is in our heart. Hallelujah. Right. And when we pray, and we pray Bible-based prayers, we are heard every single time. Right. Hallelujah. Not only are we heard, we know we have the petition we put before him. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Praise this is what we're standing on. We're standing on the solid rock. We're not standing on something that's flimsy. Hallelujah. We're standing on something solid. Amen. Yes. And if we would get do a little study in some areas and, and find out some things and look up a few Greek words in Hebrew and, and get some really good teaching and I love to listen to good teaching. I listen to teaching I'd, I'd like to tell you all the time it, it's a lot it's just about all the time 
that I have opportunity, I want to listen to some word. I want to listen to some teaching. I, we do some singing, but I want to listen to some teaching. I want to hear what God has to say. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 5. We've been in Ephesians chapter 6 for a while. I want to back up and go to 5. And actually, I'm going to be in the Amplified Version, um, starting at verse 15. And I want us to see something maybe we hadn't seen before, or maybe you've seen it before, and I'm just going to water a seed that you already have. How many of you know you're being affected right now by the Word of God? Come on. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they're what? Life. They're spirit and they're what? They're life words. So while we're speaking the Word of God, if you've got any problem in your body, you can lift up your hand and say, I received that right now in Jesus' name. I'm being changed. My mind's being renewed. My body is being changed right now. The devil will tell you, look, there's no benefit to sitting under the Word of God. There's more benefit to sitting on the Word of God than there's any medicine that you could possibly take in this world. Hallelujah. I'm not against doctors, not against medicine. I'm just saying the Word of God is, is more powerful. It saved me. No doctor could do that. He don't, he don't even know where my spirit is. He couldn't find it. Under the, the strongest uh, uh, equipment that they have, they can give you an MRI. They can do whatever they want to. They can't find your soul and they can't find your spirit the two most important things about you they can't even find. Right. I think we need to start with God. You can add anything you want, That's right. but make sure God is the core of right. what you're believing. Uh, yeah, He's got to be the base thing. He's not something that uh, he's an add-on on the back porch or something like that. No, God's, God's Word is the main thing, the main state. Amen. Come on. Uh, let's go to 14 on the um, uh, Amplified here. In Ephesians 5, he said, Therefore, he says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall shine. Make day dawn upon you and give you light. Look carefully, then, how you walk. Live purposely, and purposely, I'm saying that right. In other words, with purpose, and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise. And I like the way the Amplified Bible puts this, witless. Use your wits. Yeah. But as wise, sensible, intelligent people, right. making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. How many of you know the days are evil? Therefore, because the days are evil, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and fully grasping what the will of the Lord is. Now, this is a main part here I want, want us to get because I think you, if you don't know who he's talking to and you, you take this, people are like, well, I don't think he meant that. I think he meant exactly what he said. Yes. And do not get drunk with wine. Yes. He's talking to Christians. Come on. He's not talking to the sinner. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to born-again people, yep. people that are in the body of Christ. Do not get drunk with wine. For there is debauchery. You say, well, if you're like me, you might need to look that up a little bit. And I did. That it's actually kind of a, a unrestrained way of living. Uh, it's sensual. Um, he said, don't, don't get drunk with wine. For there is debauchery. But ever, uh, King James Version says, be filled with the Spirit. One translation says, be being filled, which I think that one person translated that way. But this says, be, but ever be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. Speak out to one another, to yourself and others, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, offering praise with voices and instruments and making melody with all your heart to the Lord. Yes. At all times, yes. and for everything, giving thanks to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. Be subject one to another out of reverence for Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed. I thought this was interesting that he's talking to Christians, be not drunk with wine. He's talking to Christians. Well, why would a Christian? You know, we're talking about being drunk with wine. This, uh, he said, for there is debauchery, which is a careless, 
a sensual way to live, extreme indulgence and bodily pleasures. And that's when people are trying to handle this life by, uh, by other means other than the Word of God and being filled with the Spirit. And if that's what it means. We're talking about and get into an area what the Word is saying when we're saying be not drunk with wine. Well, we're talking to Christians. You say, well, be not drunk with wine. You can also be under the influence of uh, pills right. and drugs. Yeah. All kind of different things that you're trying to... People say, well, the, the, the wine is what... You know, you need to watch out for the wine. It's a marker. Well, the Bible does say that, but it also tells us that really anything that you're reaching out for to try to get that high that, that man is seeking for, he wants to live on that high. And if he don't... Um, if he don't... If he's not being filled with the Spirit on a daily basis... He's going to be seeking something else. One preacher put it this way. This world is evil, and you, you don't want to live here sober. No. No. When we talk about uh, you want to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you want to be being filled with the Holy Spirit at all times. Amen. we got to realize, when you go to Ephesians 1, uh, verses 1 and 2, I want to, if we could back that up just a minute, go to Ephesians 1, uh, verses 1 through 2. He talks about here being subject one another. This is so important. All these things, everything he's saying is important. This is Paul, an apostle, special messenger of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, by divine will and purpose of the choice of God to the saints. Who is he talking to? To the saints, to the Christian, the consecrated, the set apart ones at Ephesus, who are also faithful and loyal and steadfast in Christ Jesus. This is who he's talking to. He's talking to the saints. So he's saying, be not drunk with wine. Okay, so we've got to understand a few things. The two most important things that we need to know in life, we could say, well, there are these two, these two. These are two of the most important, not the only. One thing is what to yield to and what to resist. Uh, what the church has done has focused a lot on what um, people uh, they didn't need to do. In Galatians chapter 5, he taught at least all the works of the flesh, but Brother Kenneth, the way he said to handle that was not to try to do the works of the flesh, but to focus on the fruit of the Spirit. Focus on walking in love. Focus on the fruit of the Spirit. And if you focus on walking in the fruit of the Spirit, you don't have to worry about all this other stuff. Amen? That's the way it works. Hallelujah. So, how did Jesus know, when he was in the wilderness, how did he know what to yield to and what to resist? How did Jesus know that? By the Word of God. He knew when, when Satan come up and told him some things, he knew by the Word of God, this is not something I yield to. I don't turn the stone into bread. I don't do it this way. This is not how I'm supposed to handle it. This is not what the Word says. So he knew by the Word of God. So the Holy Spirit will lead us, uh, if we stay in the Word, the Holy Spirit will lead us to what Scripture we need to, uh, to use to pull down strongholds, things that come up in our life. I believe that's what's meant uh, in 2 Corinthians when he said they're mighty through God. And Ephesians uh, 6, it says, in the power of his might, I believe that what he's meant by this is the scripture. If you follow the leadership of the, the uh, say the word and follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So what these translations are saying and what the word is saying is by you don't uh, are not a vic live a victorious life and handle everything you need to handle in spiritual warfare by having been baptized in the Holy Ghost 20 years ago. There are many people uh, I was one of them. I, I had been baptized in the Holy Ghost when I was 11 years old. But I had lived for several years as a teenager because of wrong teaching. I hate to say it, but wrong teaching. I thought God had left, so I didn't expect Him to help me. I thought He'd done give up on me. He wasn't going to help me. There wasn't no need to pray. And when I did pray a prayer, I said, oh, I sure hope this one gets through. I didn't have any confidence. I didn't know about the love of God. The Bible says that faith worketh by love. And if you don't know the love of God like you need to, your faith is not going to work like it needs to. So I didn't know anything about this. And I had, I had spoken tongues, but nobody told me I was supposed to fellowship with the Lord. And I was supposed to practice speaking in tongues on a daily basis. 
I didn't know uh, what it says in the book of Jude. I didn't know that I was supposed to build up myself on my most holy faith. Brother Jerry, I don't know if they taught that where you went or not, but when you when they taught being saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost, that's what they taught you're supposed to do. And then you come to church, but nobody told me. There were many that did practice it maybe when they was at home or maybe in the service, but I didn't know. I thought that, some, that somebody or something had to take over me while I was sitting in church and it had to make me stand up and, and speak in tongues or, or be spiritual. It wasn't something that I could just yield myself to, yield to the Holy Ghost and begin to speak in tongues and to praise God in the Spirit, speaking to myself and songs and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in my heart to the Lord because that's how you keep, you keep yourself being filled with the Spirit on a daily basis is by speaking to yourself songs, uh, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs on a daily basis. That's how you stay, staying full of God and staying full of the Word by speaking to yourself. Hallelujah. By not having someone speak to you altogether, but you've got to learn how to speak to yourself yes. in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Amen. 150 psalms, 150 uh, chapters. Yeah. In the book of Psalms. That we are to, are to be able to find one. Glory to God. To speak to ourselves in yeah. Psalms. And hymns. Glory to God. Spirit, yeah. And spiritual songs. Just singing a song. Making up a song. Anybody ever writ, wrote a song? Let me see your hand. You just make up a song. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so uh, somebody said, well, you know, singing. We're supposed to be singing. Speaking to yourself in Psalms and hymns. Singing. And spiritual songs. Staying full of God by doing that. The reason people don't stay full of God is they wait till they get to church to hear something or hear a song. And they spend all week long sometimes dealing with all kind of stuff. The devil's shooting at their head and they don't do anything at all about it. Then they come to the service and then they're wanting to, you know, get their self built up. That's not the way it works. And we need to be being filled with the Spirit. I didn't know that years ago. Anybody in the house, I didn't know that years ago. Um, I didn't know that that's what that's how you stay built up in God. That's how you keep from going over and taking something else from, from wine to drugs to whatever. You stay full of God by speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. In Jude 1 and 20, uh, Brother LJ, if you'll go there, just amplify. I'm not amplified, but King James Version. Jude chapter, there's only one chapter there, verse 20. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you getting something tonight that's going to help you? Amen. Amen. You wake up in the morning. Yes, you get the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I think we're supposed to be in Jude one twenty, honey. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But ye, beloved... Who's he talking to? A lot of people are doing different things. I'm talking to you. Building up yourself on your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Or praying in the Holy Spirit. You build up yourself on your most holy faith. You speak to yourself every day. What do you do? Speak the Word, Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Praising God. Somebody um, made a remark, and uh, I think it, I think it's going to help us tonight. Hallelujah! Somebody once made a remark about a Christian that had made some bad choices. See, a lot of people think that if a Christian does something, he said, "Be not drunk with wine or don't drink." They think if a Christian does that, they're not Christians. But Paul was talking to Christians. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep it the way he wrote it. He was talking to Christians. He's saying, I'm not telling you uh, that it's a good thing to do, but I'm telling you, how do you keep from doing this? You build up yourself on your most holy faith. You focus on the Word. You focus on songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. You speak to yourself. Hallelujah. He said, that's how you answer it. But somebody made the remark that a Christian had made some bad decisions. They were being carnal. This is what we need to get a hold of, Brother Bill. If we get a hold of this, it'll help us. It'll help us help somebody else. Saved people still have their own will. 
Right. You didn't lose your will when you got saved. Right. When you get up every day, you have a will to do. You can get your mind on the Word. You can sing a song. You can uh, a psalm, a hymn, a spiritual song. You can start praying in the Spirit. You do not have to have... Uh, any anything other than what you've already been given the utterance you just go praying in the spirit that'll keep you from walking in the flesh that'll keep you from being carnal that'll keep you from needing something else other than the word and other than the Holy Spirit uh, they said this about a man. To save people still have their own will. And I've heard people say, well, we, did you talk to that person right before they died? Because they made a mistake. Um, I knew of a person that um, was born again. They believed in Jesus. They believed Jesus came, he, just like the Word says, and that they believed he was raised from the dead. But on the day that they died, they took a drink. They didn't know how to fill their self up with the Spirit. They had a weak moment. They were carnal. They took a drink. And then people said, I don't know if that person went to heaven or not. I don't know if they went to heaven or not. Well, that person did not get saved because they signed a paper saying, I will not drink. That's right. That person That's right. got saved because they believed Romans That's 10, right. 8, 9, and 10. And we're going to stand on the Word. We're not going to stand on tradition or anything else. We're going to stand on the Word. What made that person saved was what they believed about God. And they believed the record that God gave of His Son. That made them born again. Hallelujah. Somebody say, praise God. Praise, praise God. God. You praise better be praising God about it because you're... You You've got a flesh, and, and you've got your flesh. Let me say this about your flesh. This is not flesh. This is your body. Right, yeah. It's your body. Right. What is flesh? Flesh is the unrenewed part of your mind. That's what flesh is. The part of your mind that has not been exposed to the Word of God. That's what flesh is. So everybody can, can get into a, uh, an area that's not renewed. And they can have a weak moment. They can they say something. And here's what's going to happen, Brother Jerry. We're going to have weak moments if we don't spend our time building ourselves up in the Holy Spirit and being be filled every day of our life. Right. It's not something you can. I'm not telling you to go to hell if you're not speaking in tongues every day. You're gonna you're gonna go to heaven. You'll go to heaven if you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, even if you don't speak in tongues, if you're a born-again believer. But to live a victorious life, he said, don't be witless. Don't, don't live like we don't have any sense. Right. Understanding that you have a will, and as long as you have a will, it has to be surrendered to God. And the best way to do that is through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's through surrendering that will and being built up. So some people said this. They said, I don't understand about this particular person. Said they are spirit-filled Christians. How did that happen? They were spirit-filled. And then a preacher said something that I agree with. He said, not on that day. They had not been filled up on that day. On that day, they made the wrong turn, wrong decision. They had not been built up. They didn't had not been speaking their self in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, being, being filled with the Spirit. Not on that day. They had been baptized in the Holy Ghost. They did speak in, some, t speak in tongues at some point. But they were not spending their time being filled. How, how many mistakes? Come on, we've made mistakes that would back up and, and we find ourselves going real well and everything's going good and we feel like, oh, we'll never make a mistake again. We'll never doubt anything. We'll never turn. It's on those days that we need more of the speaking in tongues and, and the songs and hymns and spiritual songs that we need to speak to ourselves understanding that as long as you are in this world you're a Christian and you have a will and you have to will to get in the spirit you will to do that I don't come in service brother Kenneth and just wait until something takes me over I enter into worship by my will. Right. I enter into worship. I make a decision I'm coming to church. I make a decision I'm going to keep my mind on the Lord. If I'm watching something on TV and they're saying some stuff, I'm, I'm going to click some things off. Am I perfect in that? Absolutely not. And the Holy Spirit said, okay, we've got a standard here. You want to, well, you want to be filled with the Spirit? You want to be filled with a pile of stuff that, that's contrary to that? The, the world takes pills 
And they think, well, if it's prescribed by a doctor, you know, it's okay to take that pill, even though that pill is, is not going to make that person well. It's going to maybe alter their mind. It's going to do all kinds of stuff. Right. That's why he's saying here to the, to the uh, Christian, to the saints, understand the saints, the born-again ones, be not drunk with wine. Don't lean on something other than the Holy Spirit. Right. Do you know that the Holy Spirit, anything you take outwardly like that, Anything you would take, anything you would drink, any any kind of pill, any kind of medicine, whatever. It's such a ridiculous, poor answer yeah. to whatever's wrong with you. Right. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit is far, far more potent and better than anything else you would ever take. Come on. Yeah, man. That's why people are out here in this world and they're taking so many things because they don't have the peace of God in, in relationship. But we can find Christians can make mistakes. Yeah. So when a preacher said, not on that way, you've been baptized maybe 20 years ago and you spoke in tongues. But you didn't, you didn't continue speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. See, the devil come up with something that got your mind. You, you, you yielded to it. Most important, what you yield to, what you resist. When the devil comes up and he gives you something to think on, you say, not today. Right. I heard a preacher say this. One of my, I don't like to say favorite preachers, but he is. But he said, I'm not saying I couldn't fail. I'm saying I can't do it today. Because I fill myself up with the Spirit of God today. I'm full of God today. That's what we need to be full of, is full of the Spirit and full of God. When I say full of God, full of the Word, full of, of the songs, hymns, spiritual songs. Paul was speaking to believers. Keeping our thoughts on God and keeping His Word is our choice. It's our responsibility to speak to ourselves. In songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. And people say, uh, and I know a lot of people have made jokes about this, but maybe I'll, this will help you too. Like now, you know, you can you can come up with little jingles or whatever. You can write your own songs. You can decide. When the devil comes, you might not have a song book in front of you. You might think, well, I can't think of uh, anything right now, but I'm just going to open my mouth and speak to myself in songs, hymns, spiritual songs. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sing a song. Everybody, every person can sing. Yeah. A lot of people say, no, I don't think everybody can't sing, Sister Janice. I've heard some people who couldn't. No, everybody can sing yeah. and make melody in their heart to God because Amen. this is what he's telling the church right here at Ephesus. Amen. Now, Brother Jerry, this will help us. Everybody can sing, but everybody shouldn't record. Right. See, it, just because everybody can sing, but everybody can sing. Yeah. I don't know how you, how you feel about it. I'm just going to tell you what the Word says. That we need, uh, rather than trying not to do all these other things, but being, be being filled by speaking. What am I saying? What is coming out of my mouth? What am I saying? What am I giving God praise? Am I, what am I saying? Well, I thought... If the Holy Spirit's with me all the time, and He says He is, Amen. Ain't one word. Then, if I want to write a song, I can write one. Amen. I can write a song. I could. It might not be a top ten. Somebody might not record it. But have you ever just sung a song that you've never heard before when you was going through a mess? Anybody in the house has ever done that? Well, I have, and. Um, You're my God, I have no need to worry. You're my God, and I shall not fear. You're my God, there's no need to worry. That's why there is no fear, no fear here. Come on. Amen. Amen. You love me, yeah. I know it. surely shown it you gave your son that I could live that's why there's no fear no fear in here are you with me Amen. you're my God hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. I love the Lord hallelujah 
I love you, Lord. I love that song that says, I love you, Lord, for your goodness never fails me. Hallelujah. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I have lived in the goodness of God. Yeah. All my life, are y'all with me tonight? All my life, you have been faithful. Yes, you. All my life, you have been so, so good. Yes, you. And with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, Amen. Are you going to do it tonight? Yes, praise the Lord. Amen. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I have lived. In the goodness of God. Do it again. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I have lived. In the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. And with every breath that I am able, I will sing all the goodness of God. Come on, stand. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. And with every breath that I am able, I will sing all the goodness of God. I love
myself. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. And psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. When you're going Thank every you, day Jesus. and the devil is trying to irritate you or something, Praise. break out into a song. Start worshiping God. Lifting up your hands and say, Lord, you've been good to me. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fret. God's never failed me yet. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in the house where God has failed you? He's not failed you. singing those words that the Holy Spirit gave me and I got to feeling better and I got to feeling more energized I got to feel and I started speaking in tongues and I started just feeling the power of God and I know I don't remember exactly but I know that it was shortly things started opening up Amen. God has given us a way Amen. Yeah. but see we I, I was thinking while she's saying this and I'll let, it, let you go yes. because in a Janice of Zard I want to give a testimony real quickly yeah. too I used to have an alcohol problem and I was going through Ufala, Alabama, and they pulled me over. They put me in jail, and the charge was, you're under the influence. And she was teaching on this. I was not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I was under the influence of alcohol. People in this world are under influence of something. Is why they don't go to church. And I don't care how good you preach. 
if they don't get under the influence of the Holy Spirit, the next time church comes, they're not going. Thank you. Thank you. They're not going to follow the Spirit of God because they're under influences. But God was saying what she was preaching tonight was, is God wants us under the Holy Spirit influence. If we'll do that, we'll walk in victory and abundance and increase and health and prosperity, feeling well. But this world, more so than ever, there's a little thing called a cell phone that people are under the influence of. They're under the influence of a lot of other things instead of being under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And that's what's happening. People are drunk, but they're drunk with the world. And they're not, they're not high on the Holy Ghost. Come on. But you can be. But you can be. Amen. And we need to be. We need to be every day. We need to be. be. Glory be to God. Uh, real quickly, Sister Kim, we prayed for her. She went to Gainesville and had surgery. She got to where she couldn't hear. She can't hear very well in one ear anyway. Then in her other ear, she couldn't hear very well. They took out a tumor out of her ear. She just called us last night. I believe it was, and from Gainesville, and she just come out of surgery, and she said, "I appreciate y'all praying because when they took that tumor out, they found no cancer in it. Number one, and number two, said she said, uh, Brother Jerry, they got up my ears covered up, and she said I can hear better with that thing covered up my ear than I have ever heard in my life. Oh, yeah. So glory be to God. We need." to tell the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Those that are under the influence of the Holy Ghost can get ears healed and surgery. You know, but this is something we need to tell our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Tell our brothers and sisters in Christ. Because I think sometimes people live under condemnation. They live under guilt because they have weaknesses and they have different things. They turn to other things what he wants them to know is the answer is just be being filled with the Spirit of God. Just be being filled. Go ahead and speak to yourself in the Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Glory to God. Be in full. I love that. You are the key you in on that. What was you in on the He made away from me.
Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. 